I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of surface engineering and in the previous presentation we have talked about the basic principle of the carburizing and how does the addition of the carbon in the low carbon steel surface leads to the variation in properties. Now we will see uh, that uh, what are the different methods of the carburizing to introduce the carbon uh, at the surface and subsurface layers of the steel so that the required improvement in the properties can be achieved. Uh, but as I have told you that the carburizing uh, basically helping to increase the carbon content only at the surface layers. So, uh, the carburizing is helping to increase the carbon content wherein there will be gradient like say 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4 like that and 0 0.2 in the subsurface zone. <coughs> So, uh, for, uh, for ensuring that this uh, carbon is utilized effectively, it is necessary that the post carburizing heat treatment is carried out uh, so that whatever austenite with the high carbon content is present is transformed into the high carbon martensite in order to increase the hardness as well as to develop the residual compressive stresses at the surface so as to have the enhancement in properties. And therefore, we utilize a particular heat treatment cycle for the carburizing purpose. And the heat treatment cycle which will be showing the variation in temperature as a function of time. So, in uh, x axis we have time say in hours or it may be in minutes, in y axis we will have the temperature. Uh, the temperature say 800, 600, 400, 200 degree centigrade. So, what we do first of all for carburizing purpose we heat the component to the high temperature, temperature high enough like uh, like say this is 1000. So, normal heating is done in the band of 850 to the 950 degree centigrade and after this heating it is held at that temperature for some time so that carburizing take place this is soaking time. So, uh, after the soaking at this uh, uh, at the required temperature like say 850 to 950 degree centigrade. Uh, it is given a first stage cooling uh, like say at 830 degree centigrade once the things are I uh, means the steel component is carburized and once this uh, somewhat lower temperature is achieved it is subjected to the quenching. So, this is rapid cooling or quenching process. In this process if the direct quenching is possible then uh, uh, in this uh, rapid cooling or quenching process austenite to the martensitic transformation will be facilitated. Since the austenite to martensitic transformation will be occurring with the uh, with the lot of uh, increase of a specific volume leading to the development of increased hardness as well as increased residual compressive stresses at the surface. Therefore, in order to induce some of the uh, some of the toughness and avoid the possibility of the cracking tendency due to the hardening, the, the carburized component is subjected to the tampering. So, tampering will be done like 300 to 400 degree centigrade. So, again heating is done for the tampering purpose and after tampering it will be cooled. So, this is uh, the tampering heat treatment, this is the like say step cooling followed by a rapid quenching and this is the soaking for carburizing purpose. So, this is a, uh, this is called a direct quenching case direct quenching followed by tempering treatment. But in uh, if the geometry of the component is complex the size is big then we need to follow the two stage or three stage uh, quenching. 
for the second stage and um, you know, for the dual quenching or cooling, cooling uh, it is done uh, in this way first of all heating then one uh, stage quenching then uh, again heating to the AC3 temperature followed by quenching to the room temperature then tampering will be done. Now, as far as the relationship between the uh, time for carburizing and the carburized depth is concerned, the depth carburized like say 0.5 mm 1 mm carburized depth in mm 1.5 mm 2 mm and 2.5 mm and here you know, we have in hours 1 2 3 4 5 so uh, the carburized depth at a low temperature it will be increasing gradually like this at 850 degree centigrade while at 950 degree centigrade it will be increasing rapidly 950 degree centigrade and the reason for this at a high temperature much higher solubility of the carbon in austenite of carbon in austenite and increased uh, diffusion coefficient of carbon. Uh, so, the faster diffusion at a high temperature facilitates the uh, carburizing up to the greater depth in a shorter time. If we say like say in the 2 hours if we see in this particular case the carburizing is happening up to say 1.5 and here the carburizing is happening up to the 0.5 only. So, there is a lot of a difference as far as the case depth which is achieved at low temperature carburizing and high temperature carburizing. Now, as per the medium being used for medium for carburizing, there are different methods of carburizing. There are different methods of carburizing like there is one solid or pack carburizing. In solid or pack carburizing basically the solid powdery mixture is used. In case of the liquid carburizing, uh, molten bath is used for the carburizing purpose. In case of the gas carburizing, a gas mixture is used for uh, enriching the carbon content in the steel surface and vacuum carburizing. Vacuum carburizing is performed under the vacuum conditions so that there is no presence of oxygen and there is no oxidation of the component. Uh, mainly the methane is used for this purpose. Uh, so, these are as per the medium being used for the carburizing purpose, there are different methods of carburizing. In case of the solid carburizing, uh, basically the one uh, steel container is, is used fitted with the different compartments like this. And here the components to be carburized are placed like this and uh, the, the entire space is uh, filled with the, the charge which is a, a mix. So, here we fill the charge. Charge is a basically mixture of the charcoal. and barium carbonate. Barium carbonate act 
acts as a energizer for uh, decomposition and making the active carbon available for diffusion. So, uh, this uh, mixture is filled charcoal and calcium uh, barium carbonate mixture is filled in this space where the component to be carburized have been kept and this entire space is closed uh, and then it is subjected to the heating to the high temperature 850 to 950 degree centigrade. So, this uh, charcoal having primarily the carbon in presence of limited oxygen forms the CO and the, the CO on thermal decomposition provides carbon, a nascent carbon which diffuses onto the surface of the steel component which is being carburized. So, deficient uh, oxygen in this space provides the carbon, uh, mono, forms the carbon monoxide and which on subsequent reactions uh, like thermal decomposition leads to the formation of the uh, nascent carbon or carbon in atomic state and which gets uh, uh, diffused into the surface of the steel components to be carburized. Uh, in, and uh, once we are able to achieve the carburizing up to the required depth, these components are taken out. So, uh, there are uh, these components are taken out and after that these uh, carburized components are heated again to the austenitic state and after the after that these are cooled or quenched for hardening purpose. So, now there are certain problems with this approach. Uh, 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 those problems include since the uh, in, in one enclosed chamber all the components to be carburized are kept uh, in the charge uh, along with the charge mixture and then entire system is heated to the high temperature. But uh, we have very poor control over temperature 1 and the kind of chemical reactions chemical reactions taking place within the chamber and because of the poor control over the temperature as well as reactions, we have less control over carburized depth. So, the, we have a limited control over the depth of carburizing in the case of the solid or pack carburizing and therefore, it is somewhat uh, less preferred method. On the other end, there is one more issue that uh, since the component is heated to the high temperature of 850 to 950 degree centigrade, thereafter we have to cool it down for taking out after the carburizing. And, uh, and after that again it is to be heated to the austenitic state then cooled rapidly uh, for quenching purpose. So, in this method no direct quenching is possible. So, in case of pack carburizing we cannot do the direct quenching from the austenitic state for forming the high carbon martensite so that the required improvement in properties can be achieved and we have poor control over the temperature during the carburizing and uh, uh, poor control over the re chemical reactions which are taking place and therefore, carburized depth is also very uh, poorly controlled. So, these are the two uh, major issues uh, related with the carburizing, uh, pack carburizing and therefore, uh, it is somewhat less preferred method and this kind of situation forces us to go for the two stage heating 
because first of all we have to take out the sample after the carburizing and then again it is to be heated to the osmotic state followed by the uh, rapid cooling. So, in this case we follow the heat treatment cycle of this kind, we just take out the sample uh, this after the carburizing and then uh, it will be heated again to the osmotic state followed by rapid cooling. So, this is the hardening treatment, this is the carburizing treatment and then again we have to perform one more tampering treatment to, uh, to induce the set of properties that are, that are required. So, we need to perform the heating three times in this case, first for carburizing, then for hardening and then for tampering purpose and this is what is applicable in case of pack or solid carburizing. Now, uh, we will be uh, talking about the another carburizing method where the molten bath is used. So, the liquid molten bath is used in case of the liquid carburizing. So, liquid carburizing basically uses some of the chemical mixtures like barium chloride, sodium cyanide and uh, sodium carbonate. So, these 3 Na2CO3, these are the 3 mixtures uh, chemical uh, chemicals in the liquid form are used in the molten bath for the carburizing purpose. So, basically bath of these um, 3 uh, chemicals is heated to the required temperature of uh, 870 to 950 degree centigrade and once we get the required temperature component to be carburized is dipped in bath. So, when the component to be carburized is dipped in bath bath which is in the liquid state with these chemicals offers the quick heating. So, heating is fast due to the good thermal contact of the liquid with the component being heated. This is one thing. So, the rapid heating is achieved and we have close control over the temperature, close control of temperature. So, this is another good side of the molten bath which is used in liquid carburizing and another important point is that we can take out the component carburized from the molten bath easily for required quenching. So, it is possible to perform the direct quenching after uh, the liquid carburizing. Uh, so, all the two issues uh, which were there with the pack carburizing can be effectively resolved using the liquid carburizing. The two major problems with the pack carburizing were there uh, that direct quenching was not possible because of the inherent nature of the process where we were supposed to take out the sample after the carburizing first and uh, thereafter it was required uh, to, to heat it again to the osmotic state before quenching. Uh, but in this case, the component can be taken out directly from the molten uh, bath after carburizing and then it can be quenched to achieve the direct quenching. Uh, the second uh, uh, positive point of this process is that uh, it offers the, the process is fast because of the uh, good thermal contact of the molten bath with the components. So, the fast heating takes place and we have very close control over the temperature and close control over the reactions. So, we can closely control the depth uh, being carburized or the depth of the component which will be carburized. So, uh, the two uh, plus points which will be uh, plus points of the liquid carburizing which uh, uh, will be overcoming the issues of the pack carburizing are close control over the over depth of carburizing 
and another one is direct quenching is possible in case of the liquid carburizing. So, the heat treatment cycle which will be used in liquid uh, carburizing is this first heating to the required temperature of 870 to 950 degree centigrade followed by direct quenching for hardening purpose. Because nature of the process is that we can take out the sample and quench into the bath directly for the hardening purpose and thereafter we can go for tampering. So, it requires the heating just twice one for carburizing and second for tampering purpose to induce the required toughness and required properties. The chemical reactions which are uh, observed during the liquid carburizing is that um, in this case basically the carbon is introduced at the surface and some of the amount of nitrogen is also introduced at the surface and uh, so, but the carbon basically helps in forming the high carbon martensite. On the other hand presence of nitrogen leads to the formation of iron nitride and both these will be helping to increase the hardness and increase the residual stresses being developed at the surface. So, the common reactions which are observed in case of the liquid carburizing includes like barium chloride reacting with the uh, sodium cyanide uh, and this will be leading to the formation of the barium cyanide. plus twice of NaCl sodium chloride and this barium cyanide will be further uh, reacting with the iron to form the nascent carbon which will be getting diffused with the iron and barium cyanide. So, this is one set of the reactions which will be taking place and uh, the, there is another uh, reaction set of reactions which can occur during the liquid carburizing is NaCN sodium cyanide uh, reacting with the oxygen to form NaCNO and this uh, NaCNO will further be uh, leading to the formation of the said sodium carbonate Na2CO3 plus sodium cyanide plus carbon plus twice of nitrogen. So, both carbon and nitrogen and this carbon will be made available to get diffused into the surface of the steel. So, basically in case of the liquid carburizing uh, sodium cyanide NaCN is about 15 to 20 percent and the remaining is in form of like say Na2CO3 and barium chloride in the mixture. So, primarily uh, the property enhancement in case of the liquid carburizing comes due to the enrichment of the carbon and a little bit due to the increase in the nitrogen content. So, uh, uh, but in both the cases post carburizing heat treatment, heat treatment is needed for hardening purpose. Uh, however, in case of liquid carburizing we can perform quenching directly followed by the tempering so that the required uh, the set of the properties is achieved. Uh, so, uh, the, the liquid carburizing in right light of these properties liquid carburizing is beneficial over the pack carburizing. However, uh, so th this one is better on two counts one close control over the process with regard to the temperature with regard to the depth of the carburizing and uh, the second benefit is direct quenching is possible with the liquid carburizing. 
So, direct quenching is possible, but there are certain issues with the liquid carburizing because sodium cyanide is used. So, this is poisonous and uh, toxic gases are uh, released in this process. So, we need to be careful related with the harmful effect of the sodium cyanide and the toxic uh, gases which are released during the process. Uh, so, uh, we need to have the good uh, ventilation during this process. Uh, as compared to the um, carburizing, uh, in case of uh, pack carburizing, it was just the carbon content which was leading to the improvement in properties. In this case, the presence of the carbon and uh, nitrogen both helps in improving the properties. Uh, now, next is the gas carburizing. Uh, gas carburizing is a uh, in the process where the gaseous mixture mixture is used. So, basically the propane and butane kind of gases are used uh, for this purpose uh, and uh, the basic principle is same these gases will be providing the nascent carbon for carburizing the steel components. So, in this process basically uh, the there is a clo enclosed chamber and uh, here the, the components to be carburized will be stacked properly like this components to be carburized will be placed inside the chamber in enclosed space. And, uh, then it will be heated to the high temperature, heating to the temperature required in a range of uh, uh, like say uh, 850 to 900 degree centigrade. And uh, after heating uh, means after putting the component, the system is heated and the flow of the gases inside uh, the chamber is arranged. So, controlled flow of gas mixture which includes basically propane, butane and uh, apart from these two gases, we also use a mixture of the argon and hydrogen. So, these two gases propane, butane, propane, butane, argon and the hydrogen. This entire gas mixture is fed in enclosed chamber which is to be uh, where the components to be carburized have been kept, entire chamber is heated and inside uh, the chamber the chemical reactions which will be taking place which will be providing the nascent carbon for uh, diffusion into the steel components uh, so that the required carburizing of the components can be achieved. Here some of the things which are very crucial that the flow rate of the gas mixture is controlled properly is controlled properly because excess gas flow will be reducing the uh, uh, will be reducing the uh, availability of uh, uh, reducing the diffusivity of the carbon or the rate at which carbon will be uh, getting diffused into the uh, surface of the steel component. So, the flow of gas mixture is crucial because if the if the flow is uh, optimum it will be providing the sufficient amount of the carbon atoms which will be getting diffused into the component. So, only the limited amount of the carbon only such amount of the nascent carbon atoms has to be made available which uh, can get into uh, which can diffuse into the surface of the steel means whatever the rate at which the nascent carbon atoms are being made available, this rate should be equal to the rate at which carbon is getting diffused into the steel component. If the carbon 
nascent carbon is being made available in excess quantity and the carbon is not actually is able to get diffused into the steel components then it will start to get deposited onto the surface of the steel component and this will be leading to the formation of the shoots onto the surface. So, this kind of the carbon deposition on a steel surface will be reducing the rate at which the steel will be uh, carburized and therefore, too high flow rate is not good. The flow rate has to be controlled properly in such a way that whatever the rate at which the carbon can penetrate into the uh, steel component at the same rate it should be provided at the surface of the steel uh, and surface of the steel or, or, uh, uh, and that can be made available through the proper control over the flow of the gas mixture. Now, what are the different reactions which will be taking place inside the gas chamber about that I will be talking in the next presentation. Thank you for your attention.